especially after I'm like tired from running up the stairs. <laughs> especially after um some I'm I'm really like I went for a spray tan, so I I'm like your black friend now. But um and also for those that are going to summit, you guys, I did it my first probably two years. Summit for me, I get I love it. I just get very overwhelmed. So if I don't respond to you or you're like, hi, Sarah. And I'm like, Hey, it's not, it's like catching me at Wegmans without a grocery list. I'm just very like, my mind's going a million times. So, but here's the thing. The first two years I did not sit up close for the seminars. I see so many times coaches going to the seminars and they're just scrolling their newsfeed. And as I presented one year, it's a lot of work the coaches are there giving you pretty much like, hi, here's a treasure map. This is how I became successful in my business. Listen in, bring a notebook, have a pen. You're there to have fun with your team, obviously, but also bring that home. You're going to come home and go, oh my God, it's, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't even know where to begin. That's totally normal. Have a game plan. I'll probably do a call all about what to do after a summit. You're going to have so much energy. You're going to be so excited. Share it on social media. Um, share that, you know, that they can be there with you, all those things, but take it all in. Don't get overwhelmed. It does not matter what you wear. I'm not lying. It like from ball gowns to what Melissa's wearing right now. For real. Oh, this is what I'm going to be wearing. I overpacked, like you don't even have time to change your clothes and everybody smells at summit. Like it's not even about that unless you're like, I don't know, even walking the stage for me, but I'm not a dressy kind of girl. I'm just wearing like a, this like well melissa won't allow me to dry my hair so or i will be like it will take me forever so you might see curly hair girl so just don't don't stress enjoy it you're there to work i know it sounds crazy everything's a write-off hang on to every receipt and just take it all in and enjoy it i sat in the back and i wish i never did because i was so nervous about my team is everybody sitting together is everybody okay is somebody mad that i didn't say hi like put that was the put on your big girl pants everybody big girl yeah. pants find your yeah. own save one for a buddy and yep yeah. and i said in the summit page like you guys if you're sitting somewhere post it and if you can save seats great and if you can't you save can't for the person next to you you might meet a success partner like honestly it's everybody's there with the intention to learn and grow and be kind. And you never know who you're going to meet there as, you know, just somebody that can encourage you in your business growth from afar. Like, so um, if anybody's not going to summit though, too, here's a tip, because I know there's a lot of coaches that came on to my team that like kind of missed that deadline. Like they didn't have the courage to just go for it right away. Or you have, maybe you have something in your life that was preventing you from getting to this summit. Go on YouTube. Because most of the speakers and the presenters upload their content to YouTube. So just search Coach Summit 2019, and you're going to get access to a lot of content, not live, but within a couple days. So just because you're not physically at Summit, it doesn't mean you can't be at Summit. I still go back and look at um, past leadership trainings because they're, they all eventually go on YouTube. Um, and that's a really great way to stay connected with the information. Like Sarah said, we're going to be so overwhelmed with the information, even myself, like this is my fifth summit and I'm going to come back and my head's going to be spinning. So for me to deliver that back to my team, it might take me a little while to process that you guys can be proactive and go seek that information out. And that's kind of what I, what I want to kick off this call about is one last thing. Can I just say yeah. one last thing, anything yeah. that you find valuable post it in team legendary and um you're not doing anything wrong if you're like oh my god these people do all these things i don't do 90 percent of everything that they're talking about and i'm still successful don't get over and my husband does it every year because he's never come but he watches the opening ceremonies and the closing ceremonies you can stream it and watch it. it's in the um coach online office it'll be there and if somebody grabs it uh just put it in team legendary okay all you melissa Okay, so before we begin, everybody pull out their phone, everybody smile, and everybody take a picture, and here's your call to action. At the end of this call, I want you to figure out what your biggest takeaway is, and I want you to tag me on Instagram and on Facebook. 
On Facebook, I put up a post that you can comment in with whatever your biggest takeaway is. And on Instagram, you can post and tag me. It's underscore Melissa Sacco. Okay. They really want you to be focused on, first of all, paying attention to the call. But secondly, if you don't post about it, it didn't happen. You got to get into the routine of talking about coaching and looking at this as a business opportunity. This is an income call. So we're going to talk about income. And I posted about, um, I just did a quick story is about coming on here and I used to get super skeezed out about income. I no longer get skeezed out. I am 100% an open book because if I'm willing to talk about it, you guys are going to be more successful. If you take something away and you learn and you implement, whether it's from me or from the national wake up call today, you know, you've got to take that and put it into action. But I suggested this book and I want to talk to you guys about this book because this was a really big turning point in my business. Does anybody struggle with owning the fact that they want a paycheck from this job? Because I did. Like for the first year, because our mission is to help people, right? It's to serve people, it's to help people. And so for me, attaching money to that was very hard. I couldn't talk about it. I felt icky. My first challenge group was full of friends and I thought, oh, this feels weird. Like, so I had, to, I had to really step out of that. And I think that's gonna be one of the key, um, key transitions that might take people some time. And know that that's okay, but the sooner you get past that hurdle and you set a specific goal for yourself, that's when you're gonna see your, your game shift. As long as you follow up with immediate action, intentional planning and consistency with showing up in your business. You can't say, well, I want to earn $500 and then invite three people. It's not going to correlate. But what you can do is reverse engineer your income goal to actually achieve it. But in order to do that, you have to be okay. We all have to be okay saying, this is, this is my job. Like, this is my job and I give awesome service and I'm proud to do this. And yes, this is how I earn a living. And I'm happy to share that because I have to work somewhere. So I'd rather do something I'm really proud of. Um, so setting an income goal for me, the first year I didn't have one. I was like, well, I hope to pay for my groceries. And I took off my business. Um, I've never earned less than $1,000 income disclosure, but I hustled. I like in a month, I mean, but I hustled my ass off. And when I came in, really, I wanted to earn like a hundred bucks to cover my product. But I did more than was expected. I set goals higher than Success Club 5 and volume. We're heavy on volume, guys, too. I was never a Success Club only person. I have always helped somebody with something less than the challenge pack. I've never turned anybody away. And I encourage my team. I've always encouraged my team from day one. Everybody deserves help. And I've always had a group to support people in some fashion. Right? So that's kind of a huge thing. But for um, for business growth, setting a specific goal, if you can identify how much you want to earn, then you can calculate it backwards. Like, okay, if I want $500, that's three challenge packs, two beach body on demand memberships, and a canister of energy. I don't know what it is. But like, then you know that you aren't only focusing on success club, but you're focusing on helping people and building an income. And so here's what I really, the book that changed my goal setting process was the 10X rule. I put it in the event by Grant Cardone. If you're serious about making money, read that book because it helps you take the fear out of saying, I want to earn a hundred grand. I didn't walk into this business wanting to earn a hundred grand. I wanted a hundred bucks. But when I set my goal at a hundred grand, it felt so unattainable. And then I did it. And then I did it again. And then I did it again. Because I keep telling myself, I want to grow, right? So don't be scared to set those big goals. And here's what's going to happen. You might not hit that big scary goal, whether for you, your scary goal is 10 grand or a million. Like now mine is a million. Like, I don't know. I just picked it. I don't really care, but I need a goal. That's like saying, I want to go for a run. And you don't know how far you're going to run or where you're going to run to. You've got to have some type of benchmark for yourself, right? Like, otherwise, you don't go very far. So for me, I just picked, I don't know, I just picked. Why do we pick 26.2? I don't know, because it seems unattainable, right? Like, it's scary, it's big, it's uncomfortable. But when I put that goal 
into action, that's when I saw my business grow. So I really, really, if you take one thing away from this call, because not everything that I do is going to work for you. But if you take one thing away from this call is build your confidence to say you want this to be a job and then have the balls to commit to showing up every day and stop breaking the promises to yourself that you're too busy or too scared or you've run out of people to talk to because we all could feel that at some point and that's just part of business growth. So diving into personal development was huge for me. But here's what I've really realized that people around me need. Our fitness programs are amazing. Our nutrition programs are awesome. Our supplement line is so diverse, guys. It's not just Shakeology. Four years ago, I had no product line to share. We just really had shakes and E&E like and Activate. There wasn't really anything going on. So now we have this huge catalog. Like we have all, we all have so much opportunity to help people in so many ways, but we've got to educate ourselves on our product and we've got to realize what people actually want and what we need to do versus what Beachbody does for us. So Beachbody does all the legwork, all the top of the notch, top notch, top of the top, whatever products and programs, they're killer, right? They're badass. Ooh, we have new releases. Yes! See, that is income opportunity. Anytime there's a new product, that's somebody else that you couldn't help before because they didn't need what we currently had, they're opening doors for us. Okay, so that's awesome. That's their job. Our job, and I wrote a list, I, seven things. Seven things, you ready? Seven things people need, in my opinion, the people around me, okay? People need to realize, first and foremost, they're not alone. The number one thing I think that people are lacking in their lives, they're either lacking support or accountability or camaraderie, community, something. They need to know they're not alone. They need to know that they are capable, that they are worth it, and that these programs are doable. So I am having my daughter do the morning meltdown 100 and she is 10. I figure, A, she's super excited about it. Leah! Hey, Leah! Shut up. She's on her headphone. Come, come here. Come here real quick. We'll, we're going to make you guest speak. Coach and train. She's super excited about it, right? But what that also demonstrates is that it's doable. Like, and it's going to build in her something new that wasn't there before. And that's going to light my fire to share my story. So you, if you have kids, use them as props, whatever. If you don't, don't. What, you got to figure out what your thing is, right? But if I showcase that we are all capable of, as a family to do at least some of these workouts, even if she doesn't do all 100, like, so what? She did 10. It's like setting your financial goal at 100 grand. If you didn't earn 100, that's okay, but you probably earned more than if you set your goal at 10 grand. You're probably going to hit more than 10 if you set a goal at 100, right? Same concept with the workout. Honey, what are you most excited about? Here, put, put Dudley down. What are you super excited about for morning meltdown? Come on in. Say hi. This is Leah. She's a coach in training. She's been part of this business since the very first day. What are you very most excited about for Morning Meltdown? You got to talk loud. You don't know. What are you most scared about? Yoga. No. I know. I got, I got, we got laid into about yoga. What's like, why did you trying to finish it that's it like that's all that's all we're here for right I, I feel like everybody needs to know that it's doable the goal is simple it's just to finish right same thing so people need that people need to know that they're worth it and they need some reassurance once in a while because people stumble all the time so like it's not our job to write a workout our job is just to check in with people that maybe have gone missing um posting to a challenge group people need reminders to do their like this weekend in my accountability group it was clean your fridge challenge post your picture when you're done because everybody I needed to do it so I figured somebody else would need to do it like those are the little things and realistic success tips and ideas like things that are working for us we're like idea generators and then a chance to engage so in a private group where they feel comfortable sharing their transformations or engaging in a one-on-one -on -one message thread, you might be in a position in your business where you don't have a challenge group yet because you're new and, and, and you don't have one. So a chance to engage would just be a simple one-on-one -on -one message thread.
Um, so it can really apply to any level. Um, but and then I so those are my seven things. They're not alone. They're capable, and the programs are doable. They are worth the investment of their time and money. Um, reassurance that they are doing the right thing and that they're doing well, even if they fail. Um, a reminder to do their things. Realistic success tips, and then a chance to engage. So those are like my things. Those are what I focus on in my accountability groups because that's where that's my job. My job is to offer community and an experience. It's not a program. The programs are written. So. Um, Earning though, I think, here's my four things that I said would, would be like my token things from where earning comes from. So earning comes from allowing yourself to set a goal to earn an income. And that's probably the biggest hurdle. That was my biggest hurdle. Allowing myself to set a goal, being open and talking about this is our job. This is our family business. Involving your family and sharing your visions with them Thank you. Um, sharing your visions with them. And you know what? If you're getting pushback, if your family is completely uninvolved, that's okay. That's why you have Team Legendary. That's why you have my team. That's why you have, you know, your challenge group. You're never alone. So you just have to plug in to where the support is. Um, Self-accountability to show up to work. That's huge, especially in summer. It's super challenging. Figure it out. Like. So for me, today I came in and I did a three and a half hour power block because I haven't been able to sit down and focus. But that was that's what worked for me today. So you gotta figure out what's gonna work for you, but you can't skip too many days and expect your business to grow financially. Um, being okay with failure is my number three rule with earning an income, because you're bound to fail. Like people are gonna cancel you know, people are, are going to ghost you, you're going to say something that didn't come out the right way, or you're going to set a goal, you're not going to reach it. And that's not a failure. It's just learning. And then serving, not selling your clients. And this one, I have a story. Okay, so this is, and I'm going to lead into customer retention, loyalty and referrals, which all boost your income from this one story. So I have this woman in my group. She's been with me for years. She's later in life. She's not as mobile um, as she would like to be. She's also not really finding success in her weight loss because she's not really doing her programs, but I really love her. And she is the person that suffers from severe FOMO, which we love to maximize in this business. Am I right? Like a lot of what we do is based on FOMO, fear of missing out. However, she wanted to purchase Morning Meltdown 100. And Financially, it would serve me in the immediate to say, sure, let's do it. Here's the link, right? I said, well, why do you want to do this program? She couldn't come up with a why. She said, well, everybody else is doing it. And I said, well, ma'am, let's, let's get you in like nutrition mode. Let's, let's hold off because I don't think, I love our modifiers, but not every program is built for everybody at this time. She may be able to build up to it, but all I could see was another commitment that she made and didn't finish. So I said that. And I said, my job isn't to sell you or push you the next product. My job is to help you find success. And I don't know that this is the right program if you can't tell me why you want to do it other than everybody else is doing it. Because you're not going to commit. But that doesn't, so I'm not going to earn commission on that particular person from this program, but what I am going to earn is customer loyalty and a trusting relationship and referrals and customer retention. So while a lot of coaches seem to fit, focus on high success club numbers, and I, I love success club. I think it's a great, I'm all about the lead program still. I'm about customer retention as much as I am building. Because if I can build a loyal community that continues to stick with me and try the new programs and try the new products, I don't have to hit Success Club 100 or find 30 new customers a month because I have retention. And Sarah's right, I see it in the chat. Re retention equals volume. And if you learn this business and you keep going and you learn to um, stack your downline, then you'll build without working so dang hard. 
So that's what I wanted to train my team on. Um, I'll teach recognition, but I've never chased that recognition just because it doesn't serve my heart. I don't actually like it. If you like it, then do both. But always put your customer first because loyalty equals retention and referrals and long-term business support. If you are constantly scrambling to find new challengers and then every 30 days they're dropping off and they're leaving your community because you didn't invest in them, you just wanted that sale, you're, it's going to be like this hamster wheel you'll never build. So for me, I always have put that customer or client, I hate calling them customers. Does anybody else get really uncomfortable with the term customer? I hate it. I, I don't like challenger either though, maybe client. I don't know what to title it because I become so invested in the people that are willing to accept my help that they're more friends than anything. But it's still a business. So I have to like, figure out that balance that works for me and how I speak about it. And you guys will have to figure that out too. So that is, you know, I'm sure Sarah, any of the diamonds will be able to teach you as a new or learning coach, how to grow your business income as you grow. But it really starts with each individual setting the goal to, to get it and then going after it and seeking out that information and seeking out those people and recruiting, so to speak, filling your, filling your inbox with tell me mores. And then you can reach out to your sponsor and say, oh, okay, I'm talking to this person. You know, that's, that's kind of what I did with Sarah. If I wasn't sure at first, I'd say, well, I'm talking to this person and they want to do this. Like, this is their helpful. What program would you suggest, Melissa? Like, what would be a good program or product that would serve this client? But until each individual, you get, we're all our own CEOs. So we got to have those inbox messages of tell me more. And that is on us. And that I think is something that that's another big takeaway from this call is you've got to own that. And if your inbox is not full, that's on you and you got to move your business forward. And the way to do that is diving into social media, learning how to talk to people, personal development, getting really excited and doing a program just for yourself. And then letting that passion you know, move your audience and it might take a month, it might take six months. You know, we, we all know there's no set timeline or anything like that, but I've just seen too many people find success to have any doubt in this business that it's possible for anybody to achieve it. Um, yeah, start your own test group. You know, I have a team shared group. I love it. I love the power of community. Um, I think it does well to, especially for new coaches, like you guys have your legendary self. I have my version of that, but it's a paid member group or a sneak peek group. And that's awesome because I think we can expose people to different programs and products that way in a much quicker pace. But I also think there's such power in taking leadership of your clients, taking leadership of your, you know, people that trusted you and putting them in a small message that are putting them in a small group. When you're, when you're at that point in your business, if you're really here to grow, that should be your goal. You should want that leadership role in some fashion, whether it's with a success partner or something like that. But, but I do love the power of community too. So I think, um, I think that goes to a lot of success in this business is people don't, if they could do it alone, they wouldn't be looking for a solution right? Like if they could do it on their own, we wouldn't have any potential. Um, and yeah, showing up when it's, when it's um, inconvenient. That was my day today, like super inconvenient, but I'm just going to read um, the chat. The book is The 10X Rule um, by Grant Cardone. It's on audiobook. I am a huge fan of audiobooks. Um, if you're having a problem Owning that you have a vision for success. The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes is legit my soul food. It's also one of the challenge the books that I recommend for challengers because it's just about going for it, whatever it is. Um, but the Year of Yes was life changing too. So that's it, guys. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Is there any questions or does anybody have any specific income questions, commissions, cycling? 
coach placement, like anything, even if we can't cover it on this call, if you ask, we can one on one. But what's up, Sarah? Okay, so I want you to share when you, I mean, I don't know if everyone knows this, Melissa was a discount coach. Like, where was it that it was like, <clears throat> we all have this defining moment where we're like, okay, I'm doing this. And your anger um, started to come. Like, can you share just where yeah. life was, where yeah. your mind was, all the so things? My, my mind was shitty. Mm -hmm. Personal development took me a year. Um, now I'm obsessed. But um, I was not in a good place. And I couldn't think about coaching because I felt like shit every day. Like, that my priority was me. And when I started to feel better, that's when I opened my mind to, and then when my husband said he would join me, that's, that was another spark. It was like putting kindling on a fire. And the, bomb, the bonfire lit when I ran my first challenge group because it became a, a team sport and it became about seeing other people succeed, which to me, I had never made that a priority in my life, nor had I felt it. And I became an addict. I cared so much less about what I was doing. I mean, because I'm pretty disciplined. If, if you lay a program out for me, 90% of the time I'm gonna kick its ass. There's 10% I struggle. But for me, and Rachel Hollis talked about this in um, Girl Wash Your Face, when she was a runner and then she stopped running and she started cheering her friends on. And that shift of mindset for me, this is all about seeing other people have an amazing experience, not just a transformation, but an actual experience, like a community and friendships and trips. And I plan getaways, like we're going to Nashville in 2020. My clients, not my coaching team. I love my coaching team too, but I don't dif differentiate, honestly, between working coaches and challengers. If they're showing up, they're going to get all of me. And that's it. Like, I just love to see people feel like they killed it. And so that, that for me, when I saw that, I ran the, first, the 21 day fix. Um, I ran it January 22nd was my launch group. And I signed up as a coach January 1st. So I gave myself three weeks to recruit and I picked a date and I figured whoever's going to do it, if I have three, great, but I want 30. So I invited everybody I knew. Like, I just didn't care because I didn't care. Like, what? you're not going to die, right? Like, it's not going to work if you half-ass it. So I just did it. And I saw those results. I still have the group. I go back to it when I'm feeling in a funk. I go back to that Facebook group and I look through those posts. And honestly, that group sucked. Like, now what I do in groups, back then it was like logging your food. There were no selfies. There was no life to the group. But there was behind the scenes one-on-one -on -one messaging. And there were transformations that happened. That I remember. So looking at the group as a shell, it was the worst freaking group I ever ran. Like I had, but I had no idea what I was doing. But we don't have to know. The programs guide us. The programs guide us. Like just do your shit, do your workout. Like you know, it's not that complicated. I'm running a next level um, morning meltdown prep group, and today's challenge is just prep. I'm like, show me your lightning bolt. Not freaking hard, people. I didn't have to create the lightning bolt. Just community and like reminders. Okay, do my workout. Got to do it, you know, and, and getting that vibrance from people and being really patient. And, and you know what? I talked to somebody else today who went MIA. Drive me nuts. Drive me nuts. I've known this lady for 10 years. Signed up. I'm do it. I'm do it. Never showed up. And I'm like, three messages. Where are you? What is happening? I'm reaching out because you told me when you signed up, you need a kick in the ass. So here it is. Well, she spilled the beans that she didn't spill prior, that she is like in some serious, like emotional, like her life is a wreck. And she said, I signed up because I needed a friend. So like, you gotta be patient with people. And so now we have a whole new game plan. I'm like, girl, Here's a podcast. I put it in my challenge group. I'm like, all right, who's going through this situation? What book helped you? What podcast helped you? What whatever? I'm gonna recommend that she does a particular workout that is gonna be transform 20, but I'm gonna recommend that she actually does it because Shanti has super powerful like fighter mindset built into that program. 
So I know my programs and I, and I just want to make sure people find success, not keep ordering stuff, but like actually use it. Doesn't it, if you ever send a link, like show of hands, you send a link and they don't show up. Doesn't that feel like the worst? Like it feels like, okay, here's my cup. Oh my God, they ordered and then like dumps all over. You never fill your cup and you're like so pissed off and they got to clean up. There's a mess on the floor. You never filled your cup. Like that's, this business is like, yeah, yeah. So like I seek out filling my cup from the people that go missing as much as I seek out new people. And it might not be a great business strategy for some people, but for me, that's, if I didn't do it that way, I wouldn't commit to showing up every day in my job. So that's where you guys get, we all get to kind of customize, like whatever would fill your cup or feel fun. Like if you don't like travel, then don't host race weekends. Or if you don't run or like, you know, like you've got to figure out, like tell me one thing, just be brave, unmute yourself. What's one thing that you would love your challengers to do with you? Like whether it's virtually or like other than beach body, what would be something really cool? Alona, do it. Okay. I just signed up my friends to just walk, run with me. And I know um, it's just a, to get together. And if we just talk and hang out, but at least it's a community of support and we're together, not just online, not just beach body. It's about a whole conversation of how was your night and what did you guys do? And that's what I love. So how can you bring that into your virtual community? Because you can. Uh, well, I just, I invite, I invite them, you know, together as a group. So. Yeah. But like, what do you do? So, cause I'm like a, I'm like a problem. So what do you do for people that like can't, cause they don't live in Buffalo? Like, how can you. They can do a virtual walk, a virtual run with us. If so? they can't, you know, like one girl couldn't come this week and I said, still tag us and be yeah. a part of our group. Yeah, That's get on it. a treadmill, whatever. So I think inviting is like half the battle, but problem solving or overcoming the logistics or objections that you're gonna hear or you're gonna face um, is also part of it. Like, so for me, I wanted to do a post. I enjoy being creatively motivating. Like that's one of my strengths. I have a ton of weaknesses. I have a ton of weaknesses, but that's one of my strengths. So I love being creatively motivating. I, I grabbed us tanks for our next challenge group and I grabbed water bottle decals and something because it's just something different. So kind of stand out a little bit, you know, and it doesn't have to be a huge investment, but um, that's it. Any other questions, guys, on income? You can unmute yourselves, I think. You should be able to. I don't mind. Um, I think problem solving. Yeah, problem solving is, so here's a question. Who's running their own Morning Meltdown 100 group? Like they're creating it, they're clicking the whatever, if you're doing it on Facebook or the tracker app. Okay, Marissa and Lauren, I'm going to unmute you. Where are you hosting your group? App or Facebook? App. So I'm doing a Facebook sneak peek, and then I'm going to be doing it on the Challenge Tracker app. How long is your group going to go? Because this is my current problem. Is it ongoing? No, it's going to be ongoing. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to start mine 30 days and then can just Six push Monday. it out. Yeah, every 30 days. So I asked a question. So this is, the, and this is kind of how I go through problem solving. And honestly, I think guys, this helps me build my income because when I ask my clients, I get better customer loyalty. So this, there is a purpose to this. So I asked in my prep group, where it's the same thing. I have a sneak peek. We're, we're all doing the workouts. We're trying them. And then customers are going to order next week and all the things. And I asked the question today, how long do you think these 100 workouts are going to take you? And half the people were like, hmm, yeah. 300 days? Like, and I was like, shit, because I set my tracker up for 100. And then I'm like, well, how am I going? So like, I, I'm, now I'm like, well, how am I going to better, how am I going to better serve my people? How am I going to set this group up to be more effective? So I got to, you always got to be like one step ahead, but that's just, that's just an example of like, you don't have to overcomplicate it, but sometimes it's fun to kind of think outside the box and go, 
well, what happens if they don't finish their hundred? Like we want to give them that, like, yeah, I did it, but they, it took me 115 days. So I missed posting and now nobody's congratulating me. Like, ah! like, so that's why I like having a 365 day group because there's always like a backup plan, but I was just curious if, and so everybody else is just going to be running it with Sarah. Is that what's happening? Or me? Or your upline diamond? I don't see a lot of faces on here. I know my whole team's doing it together because it's just like, I love that. Like that's so much cooler. But I'll have to have a powwow with my team. Like, how do I, how do I set the group up? I, you're not going to know everything. Like every time they come out with something new, you're going to have to be like, I better figure that out. <laughs> like, that's how you're going to build an income when you figure it out. Because otherwise, like, and, and you know, don't wait for somebody to give you an idea. Like create one. Just create your own path and then just build your own lane. Like if you keep waiting for permission or, I mean, it's great to ask for advice. It's great to do a brainstorm, brain dump, team call. But end of the day, if, if you don't feel it, it's not going to work anyways. So you're better just to create your own path and have an awesome experience. So reminder, call to action. You can also post this on your wall. But I'm curious, for me, I want the feedback. So what was your biggest takeaway or something that you learned or something new that you're excited to try or something? What was a benefit of being on this call? So there's a post on my Facebook wall, Melissa Bahari Sacco, and there's an IG stories um, thing going so you can just tag me. And then this way, we can all get more exposure. I will comment and engage on yours. And then if you, if you put it on your wall, and you tag me, I'll go comment on it. And we've got to learn, you've got to learn the power of using your coaching network to help your social media grow. The more engagement, the better it is for you. Um, and did everybody see that, um, the Facebook engagement post that Sarah put up in Team Legendary about um, hearts versus thumbs up and comments versus likes and sad faces and that, if you didn't, go scroll it, because that was really, really helpful for what's current on Facebook. Um, and then, of course, on Instagram, you can just go on YouTube or there's podcasts on, like, what's current for Instagram. So, all right, guys, thank you for joining. I'll post the replay um, for anybody that missed it, and have a good night. See you later.